Welcome back to Chess Dog. I'm John, and today we've got some really terrific mind-bending chess puzzles I really think you're going to enjoy. Let's jump right in. The first one was composed by Richard Reddy, obviously a great chess player, but also a great composer of puzzles. And in this particular puzzle, White's challenge is to deliver checkmate. Now, I'll give you a second to look at the puzzle, try to solve it if you'd like, and hit pause, and then we'll come back and take a look. Okay. The problem, of course, is that Black's pawn is very close to the queening square. And it looks like White is going to, be have to, going to have to give up his rook for the pawn, in which case he'll be left with a king and bishop, which is insufficient to deliver checkmate. So how does he deal with this problem? Well, the direct course of action, say king to e4, then g2, there's not much he can do. He can play rook to f2, which creates a temporary pin. Uh, but after just king to g3, hitting the rook, white would have no choice but to take the pawn, and here you would have insufficient mating material. So how then do we solve this position? Well, well, here is the key move. Rook to f3, double exclamation point. So the concept is you're actually not going to stop black from queening. You're just going to create a certain structure that favors you when he is done. So g2 is next. If he plays king to g2, then just bishop to e2. And this does win for white after king to h2, then bishop to f1. And we'll look at why that works here in a second. Because of this move, g2. And here comes another amazing move. Bishop to f1. Just a phenomenal move. Obviously, if he takes the bishop with the pawn, rook would take the pawn, and that would be... It would be a sufficient mating material, king and a rook. But the other move, he queens, and then, boom, rook to h3, checkmate. The queen betrays the black king by taking away a flight square, and you have a checkmate. Really an amazing structure and puzzle from Richard Reddy. Let's move on to puzzle number two. In this puzzle, composed by W. Lewis, and I don't know what the W uh, stands for, the burden for, is for white to draw the position, to save this position. Obviously, black has two extra pawns and a much stronger minor piece. At least it appears that way. This bishop uh, covers the whole length of the board. The pawns are on one side, so that does help the knight a little bit. The question is, how can white save and draw this position? I'll give you a moment to look at it. Okay. It begins with this amazing move from White, c4 check. Well, why would you give away another pawn? I mean, you're already down two pawns. If you're going to be down three pawns, you really would have no chance to save the position, or so you would think. But as it turns out, Black cannot take that pawn with his king. Because if he does, it's knight takes d6 check, king to b4, knight takes b5, king takes b5, and this position is a draw. And the reason it's a draw is because it is a rook pawn with a light-colored bishop, and the corner square is dark. And in order to win this, black would need a dark-squared bishop. But with a light-squared bishop, white's king can get into the corner, and black can never force it, force it out. So if just king c2, king b4, king b2, the king heads to a1, and the position is a draw. Well, what if uh, black just takes it with the pawn? instead of with the king. Now, white cannot take the d6 pawn. Well, just king to c3, blockading that pawn, and when the king moves, knight takes d6, king takes d6, and king takes c4, and again, white just moves down to the a1 square, and there is no way for black to get rid of it and win the position. So after c4, what black would need to attempt to do is to play this move, king to c5, not immediately recapturing the pawn. And then after pawn takes pawn, play d5, right? So hope that these two pawns can advance and force a win. Uh, after knight to e7, aiming at this pawn, he wants to capture it. d4, knight to f5. Again, he wants to capture the pawn. But black has one more trick up his sleeve, and it is this move, bishop to e4. Now, after knight takes pawn, king takes pawn, it looks like the same exact ending we were looking at with the rook pawn and the wrong colored bishop. But you notice that this bishop, along with the king, 
form a barrier that the white king can't cross. So this pawn cannot be blocked by the white king. So king to c1, and he just can't move over after king to c3 again, creating a barrier where the white king cannot move over, and it looks like black is going to win. But now this move b6, and after a4, b7, one square away, that distracts the bishop. Bishop takes b7, king to b1, and now the king sneaks into the corner, a3, and let's just look at that drawing process of king b1, a2, uh, check, and then that's it, king to a3, it's a stalemate. If he plays king to b4, he could just take the pawn. Uh, if instead, bishop to e4, check, then just king to e1, and that's it, bishop to d5, king b1, and you just go back and forth until black advances the pawn, and that is a draw. Now our third puzzle, which was created by Oldrich Doris, usually references O. Doris in a puzzle making, uh, we have the same situation with the, the rook pawn and the wrong colored bishop. So how does black, how does white get black's king out of that square when he doesn't have a light squared bishop to flush it out? If he just takes the pawn, then king takes b7, and then the king just tucks right back, and even though uh, white has multiple pawns, it doesn't matter. You know, all the rook pawns in the world, this king can still hide back on that square. So how then does white win this position? I'll give you a moment. Okay, here's the process by which white wins. First, king to c8. Now that looks like it isn't really solving the problem at all. Uh, it's putting the king in a position where he has no move. He's forced to make uh, a move with this pawn, because this is the only pawn that can move. Now, if he moves this pawn, say, to b5, that is a mistake uh, because of this winning process for white. He takes the pawn, black only has one move, then b6, again, black only has one move, which is to take the pawn, but then this amazing move, bishop to b8, again, blocking in the king and forcing the only available move on the board. Now, king to c7, keeping the king in the box, and after b4, you take with the pawn, and now this other pawn advances. But right as he queens, he delivers mate. So b5 is not the right response uh, from black here. Another response is b6, but that doesn't accomplish anything. White just moves the bishop once, forcing b5, and then you get the same position like we saw before. So what black does, because it's the only move that really makes sense, is bishop takes a6. Now the king is really trapped with all of these pawns on the rook file. Doesn't matter. How can white possibly win this position? Well, this brilliant move is the key idea. Bishop to b4. Now that forces black to make a particular move. He has no choice. The only move available to him is pawn takes bishop. So now pawn takes, and then a5. B5, again, the only move available, A6. Now, white could play B6 here, but that would be a blunder. That is a stalemate. Another option is pawn takes, but now we have another drawn endgame of these rook and pawn. The bishop's not even on the board now. Now it's just a king and pawn uh, drawn rook endgame. So those ideas don't work. So what does white do to win this position? King to c7 is the key concept. And then, if king to a7, just b6 check, and then you advance, and then you just promote, and that's mate in that position. So that does not work. Black needs to take the pawn at b5, but after a b5, a4, b6, a3, b7 check, and then the mating process is simple after queening king to a6, queen to b6, Mate. Now, puzzles like this definitely help us become stronger chess players, but I'll tell you something that helps us become even stronger are positional puzzles, and I've got one right here for you to look at. I think it's going to help you improve. See you again soon.